What's up my homies? Today we're going to do what we call flea market Friday. Understanding that it may not be Friday for you, but I like the hashtag. So what we got here today, check it out. Something that you would see at any flea market in the United States most likely. This is an Explore, obviously trying to knock off Sony Explode. 800 watt XR3971, has a remote control, two channel amplifier, 800 watts. Let's open it up and see what's inside. This is brand new. So there we go. We have the manual. It's all in English, mostly. Yeah, no, it's all English. Just not sure how good it's translated. And here's the amp. Got some goodies, high level input and the mounting screws. And on this side we have the base knob, which is still taped inside the box. Again, telling us that this has never been opened before. So there's the base knob attached to the cable. Looks like it's probably one of those 3.5 millimeter deals that plugs into the amp. We'll see when we pull it out. And here we go. Ooh, she looked fancy. Look at that. It feels not very fancy. Now, hold on. Did we get a free upgrade? I think we might get a free upgrade. The box says XR3971. However, the amp says XR3972. This is the 1000 watt version. We got the free upgrade and didn't even know it until now. So cool, get more than what you pay for. Now, let's see what the manual says for the 3972. Just drop the box. 3972 says 85 watts times two, four ohms, 105 times two at two ohms or bridge. <laughs> We're having a hard time spelling there. Uh, bridge dead. 210 times one at four ohms. Okay. So we don't really need to read the rest of the manual. But yeah, you can see here, according to the manual, it is gonna be a probably a 3.5 millimeter. Let's get the packaging off and take a look at it. Where does it open? Oh, there it is. Got some of this 10 year old tape. It's rare flea market goodness right here. Woo, look at that. Look at that chrome. She is shining. Reflection off of my forehead. You big dummy. All right, let's take a close up, up close and personal look at it. Here's one end, high level input, remote subwoofer control, RCA input. Not a whole lot going on there. Here's that remote base knob. Yes, you can see 3.5 millimeter. And this side, we just have the potentiometer. It's really hard to turn. It's very small but we don't really expect a whole lot more from a flea market amp. On the opposite end, we've got the speaker terminals, 30 amp fuse, 12 volt remote and ground connections. Those are screw down terminals. Not the best, but we don't expect more from a flea market amp. So what do you think overall about the looks? I don't know, man, it's pretty shiny. What about that power output? We know it's not gonna do a thousand watts, but could it do 85 watts times two or hundred watts times two? Well, what you say we hook it up and we will find out. I think that's a great idea. Now, before we get too excited about testing it, it appears that you have to take off at least this end panel or end cap or side cap, whatever you wanna call it because otherwise you can't screw down the leads. There's just no way to do that. I am literally getting fingerprints all over this Mac Daddy Chrome. Well, check that out. Okay, so it's not even that whole piece. It's just that little bar. All right, well, at least now we can hook the amp up. You can see the terminals there. Well, one other thing before we hook it up, it appears that the crossover and the gain, all those controls are underneath a panel here. 
because there's nothing to do on top of here. It's just like some kind of a plastic window we're looking through. There we go. So there's your plastic window. There's your controls. So we're gonna set it to full range, which is right in the middle. And we'll make sure everything else is set up right to try it out. Here we have the Explorer hooked up. Have the RCAs going in over here. Speakers. We have four gauge for the power and ground going into the cap bank. And let's turn it on. Hopefully it doesn't explode. Have we got any status LEDs at all? There it is. Okay, looks like we do have power. All right, so let's uh, connect it. Let's get the dyno set up and let's go ahead and try it. Explore XR3972, let's try four ohms. It's rated 85 watts times two. One kilohertz certified test first. Up to 1% total harmonic distortion. There you go, 88 and 83, that averages out to be 85 watts. A little bit higher voltage though, 14.5. Let's try uncertified up to the clipping point, four ohm stereo. Eighty-eight and eighty-three exactly the same. Let's try dynamic. Dynamic burst four ohm stereo, one kilohertz. Ninety-one and eighty-nine watts, fourteen point five. Here we go, testing the Explore XR3972. Let's try two ohms. It's rated 105 by two. Let's see what we get. Certified first, up to 1% THD. Looky what we have here. We get the rated power plus some, 128 and 112. I'm a little shocked. Unfortunately, the batteries on my clamp are dead and I don't, didn't have any more charge, so we're gonna have to go without the clamp for today. Let's try uncertified up to the clipping point. Two ohm stereo rated 105 watts times two. One twenty eight and one twelve. that's exactly what we got certified. All right, let's go back and try the dynamic test using the IHF202 certified one kilohertz burst track. There you go, kicking them numbers. One fifty eight, one forty six at fourteen point four eight. Now, according to the manual, the bridge mode, we're gonna use left positive and right negative, which is very typical for most two-channel amplifiers being bridged. So that's what we're gonna do. Here we have the left positive, right negative hooked up for bridging. We're gonna run these tests at 40 Hertz. All right, explore amplifier. We have it bridged. We're gonna try four ohms bridged and 40 hertz is the track we have here. Certified test first, 1% THD. It's rated 210 watts. See what we get. Close, but no cigar. We got 203 at 14 and a half volts. So we had plenty of voltage, just not quite the power. Now we'll try it uncertified. If it's like before, then we're not gonna notice any difference in power. We should get about the same. 
Let's see what we get here. Okay, so we did get a little more. 232 at 14.46. So we actually did the rated power at clipping. That's a bit shocking to me, I have to admit. All right, dynamic burst. And this is a 40 hertz dynamic burst since the amp is bridged. Four ohms bridge, let's see what we get. Busting the two fifties. 253, 14 and a half volts. Let's flip over the Explorer. And yes, it appears they have some screws where we're gonna need to get our special screw kit out, our precision screwdriver. So let's get that. Of course, my friends, this is why you need the precision screwdriver kit. In case you wanna get inside of your flea market amp, they don't want you to get in for some reason. So we're going to get in and find out what makes this amp tick. All right, let's see. Oh, don't tell me we've got to... Nah. Oh, it's got a sticky on it. Oh, that bottom plate is heavy. Lord, have mercy. That thing right there has got some weight. That's probably half of the weight of the amplifier. Are they cheating on us? Apparently so. <laughs> all right, there we can see the daughter board for the crossover and all that good stuff. And it's got a jumper that jumps over to the main board, which has the power supply, filter caps, outputs. Let's see, caps on, 2200 microfarad, 60, no, 35 volt. And yeah, there you have it. So it's a very small circuit board and a very small board over here for the processing. That grand base, you know, it takes some, some extra processing to get all that done. Well, folks, it's time to kick it old school. Uh, so you can feel cool. <laughs> Give it to me, baby. Yeah. 
All right, let's try this Explore amp at two ohms, dynamic burst, 40 hertz. It's not ready to handle two ohms mono, but we're gonna try it anyway. Hopefully we don't blow up the amp so we can try it on speakers. Went into Protect. Let's show that. Let's see if it comes out of Protect immediately or... Red light. So now with the camera still rolling, let's turn it off. Turn it back on. There we go, green light. Should be good to go. No two ohms mono for this. Explore.